welcome to Use Your Words. I'm your hostess, Melissa, and today we're going to be talking about values and how having some clarity on our own personal values and the values that we would like our family to share might be able to help us approach issues of sexuality with our children and even give us a foundation from which to be able to help them set limits and answer their questions. So when we're talking about values, there are three specific ways that we can think about values. And the first is as a verb. I value that I'm able to choose my own partner. Verb form, it's an action word. I value that. In the second way, it's a noun or a belief. A belief that I hold is that we should be able to choose our own partner. And the last form of values is the capital V values. These are concepts that are values in themselves. So we've got honesty, loyalty, bravery, freedom. These are values that long after we have perished, they still hold worth. While our personal values, say, being able to choose my own partner, not all cultures are necessarily going to believe that, right? Not all people necessarily have to believe that. But the majority of people are going to believe in honesty and bravery. So now that we've sorted through the different ways we can think about values, I would like you to make a list of the values that you have in relation to sexuality. And while you're going to use this information in order to connect with your teens or children, as you're making the list, I'm going to invite you to not think about them and not think about how a specific value might affect them. I would like this to be an exercise just about you, to discover, maybe for the first time, maybe you've done this before, discover and identify and clarify your values around sexuality. You believe masturbation is really important to a healthy sexual life, that it's a safe way to give yourself pleasure, find out about how your body responds to certain touch without the worry of unintended pregnancy or sexually transmitted diseases. Once you have your list, I suggest you take a little bit of time and go through it. Which values are most important to you? Are there any on your list that surprise you? Where did they come from? Were there influences that affected the way you feel about some of your values? Are they all values that you want to keep on the list? So this is the fun part, the fun part, the fun part. Take the top three or four, prioritize all of them, and share them with your teens. I'll say it again. This is about developing life skills, helping our teens develop skills that they will be able to use their entire life. And I don't know about you, but I want my kids to be able to be adaptable and flexible. I want them to be able to identify their own values and then make decisions and act based on those values. I know that when I'm dealing with my kids, sometimes I feel like I'm reacting to them rather than responding to them from a place of integrity and wholeness. I mean, sometimes things are just so crazy. And for me, being really clear about my values and sharing that with my teens, this allows me a place to come back to each time so that no matter how different the situation or how escalated our emotions or the intensity that we're feeling may be, I can always come back to this place, to this core knowledge about what I believe and what I want for my family. This helps me stay in a sex positive place, so no matter how uncomfortable or frazzled I might be, I can remind myself that one of my values is that I believe that sex is beautiful and natural. And if that's the case, then I need to respond from that place rather than reacting from a place of fear and discombobulation. If respecting my teens and their inherent wisdom and 
the inevitability of them making mistakes is of value to me, then I want to make decisions that are based on that value. And I want to interact with them based on that value, no matter how crazy making it might be. So today's resource is Amy Johnson. She's a personal life and parent coach who specializes in the intersection of faith and sexuality. Not only is she a fabulous sexuality educator, but she's a personal friend and all around great person. So I hope that you'll explore her website and maybe connect with her. Until next week, use your words.